Why I gamers, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to survive the perils of Day of Dust the Border, with some helpful tips and tricks to get you started on your path to infamacy. So you're a new or returning player, and are overwhelmed with the options presented in front of you, which is understandable given your position. Allow me to give you some tips on how to gain currency in the form of scraps, explore jobs such as mining, and some basic things that you can do in the border. Now, to kick things off you're going to want to get yourself a little bit of scraps, and in order to do that you're going to have to forage. In both Wasteland Towns, Sandingo, the one you just saw in the video, and Rosweld, the one you're seeing on screen right now, have plentiful amounts of scraps and can be found all over the floor in the spawn area. Once you have gathered a hundred or so scraps, you can proceed to the local town store and get an impressive arsenal of various tools and weapons. Something I'd recommend is not jumping straight into combat just yet though, but purchasing a pickaxe so you can grow your economy even further. Now I'm going to teach you how to use your pickaxe. Once you've bought it from your local vendor, you won't have to venture far in order to find stone. Once you've found something that's mineable, you can start to either press left click or tap your screen on mobile in order to mine the resource. The cracks in the rock will signify how far into the process you've gotten. If it's really cracked then that means it's about to break and you'll get your stone. Be aware, if you're mining a rare resource you might not be the only one that wants to get at it, so you should always be prepared with a weapon to defend yourself in that scenario. Once you've mined the rock, you should see a GUI come up in the bottom right of your screen signifying how many rocks you have. Once you bring these rocks to the Poliax vendor, you'll be able to exchange them for scrap. Finding the Poliax vendor is relatively easy, just press the toggle icons button and look for the rock icon near Poliax. Within Poliax there's the vendor, there's also a person who will sell you weapons and armor, and there's also the rare uranium ore which will sell at a much higher scrap price. As I just mentioned with uranium ore, there is more resources than just stone. These resources can include diamond, gold, or even uranium ore. There's possibly even more that we don't know about, and I won't mention in this video. Another much more riskier way to make scraps would be waiting for the VTOL to pass over. This happens every 9 or so minutes, and it drops scraps, or Fedorium power cell batteries, which are worth an absolute fortune to the Aegis Research Division. Guys, I'm not kidding here, they will pay you a fortune. One of the final ways I'm going to discuss how to make money is a relatively simple one. This simple method basically is just printing. I'm sure a lot of people have done printing in other games, you get a printer and it makes money. You can buy these printers from the Tarzadon bunker where Darren's workshop is. He'll sell you tons of rare and expensive weapons including a bunch of printers. Now if you only need one type of printer, which is the starter printer, the rusty one, you'll have to go to Sandingo and you can buy it from there as well. Once you buy the printer, you'll get a duffel bag. When you left click or press on your screen if you're on mobile with this duffel bag, it will put the printer down. Uh, this is an irreversible process, so make sure you're at your destination before you left click. Once you've placed your printer, simply tap the screen on the device and it will start printing. Then all you need to do is collect the scraps that it prints and repeat the process. Now you might be wondering where Purple Guy came from. Well, just like any friendship in the wasteland, you'll be able to meet up with other players, forge alliances, and prepare to battle the Aegis Corporation. Not every meetup might go as smoothly as you expected, so always watch your back and make sure the person you ally with is somebody you can trust. There is a multitude of things factions can do in the game, which are people who have allied each other and created an official faction in game, which will give a nice little tag above your head. Now, in these factions you'll be able to wage wars against Aegis, collect scraps together, even print together. One such task that you might be up for is going into the new Zone 14, a radioactive site left desolate and abandoned. Even though it might be abandoned, it holds host to tons of resources, money opportunities, and even battery fabrication. So if you do just so happen to take up the offer, make sure you have a civilian gas mask, military gas mask, or some form of protection suit. Otherwise you won't be surviving for very long. So you've gotten your weapons, forged your alliances, forged your economy, and you think you're ready to take on the Aegis Corporation. I will warn you now, managing this will be no easy feat. The Aegis Corporation is a military force to be reckoned with, and without substantial numbers or the element of surprise, you will likely be purged from existence. However, there is another way. 
Next to the border there's a canyon. This canyon will take you to a mineshaft entrance. There you can place C4 on the entrance and breach the area. This will avoid you from having to do a head-on assault through the border gates which is very dangerous. However, don't expect this way to be any easier as Aegis forces will probably be alerted to your position the second you plant the bomb. Be prepared. Be aware that this is not the only way into the facility as our radar groups have reported that there is multiple entrances. It is up to you to find these entrances and utilise them to your advantage. Once you have established yourself as an infamous raider, people will follow you. They will listen to you, look to you for leadership, and you will be the one to lead them into battle. A battle that has lasted over two years. Are you ready to turn the tide of the war? Raiders assemble every day hoping that their battle will be remembered, and that their battle will be the biggest in Aegis's history. There's a lot of things in this video that I have not gone into depth about, battery fabrication being one of them, and there's probably a lot more. The border is absolutely filled with content, most content players will never actually find, unless they have the intelligence to go looking for it. If you want to check the tutorial from last year for more information about stuff that was going on last year, you can look in the description of this video. As of right now, I have no intention of making videos on the specifics of these functionalities as I want you to discover for yourself. So gather your friends, join the border, and discover things you never thought possible. Oh, and one more thing, I need to tell you how the-